Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the lasso tools in Photoshop, and we got three of them. There's the magnetic, the standard, and the polygonal. Let's get into it. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today, we're dedicating an episode to the lasso tool because there are three of these guys, and a lot of people don't even know about the functionality of the different lasso tools. So we're gonna show you what each lasso tool is good for, as well as some quick tips and tricks on how to use the lasso tools and even switch back and forth of them using a keyboard shortcut. You'll learn how to create random selections with the standard lasso tool and what that's good for. Next, you're gonna learn how to create polygons with the polygonal lasso tool. And to finish it off, we're gonna show you how to trace any object in Photoshop using the magnetic lasso tool. Cool, so we're gonna start off with the standard lasso tool. Now, the standard lasso tool relies on you actually drawing a selection. And we know that it's not really easy to draw a perfect selection. For instance, if I grab my lasso tool here and I wanted to draw a perfect selection right around this wheel here, then I would either have to use my mouse or my trackpad or whatever to draw a perfect selection. And no matter how I'm good at doing this, I'm not gonna be able to draw a per perfect circle. It's like if you had a pen and you were to draw a perfect circle, you're not gonna be able to do it. You know, if I wanted to select out like this TV, an accurate way of selecting out this TV, you can see I'm, not, I'm just not able to do that. It's going to allow a lot of variation with me actually like, you know, slightly moving either my pen tablet or your trackpad or your mouse. So when you're using the lasso tool, don't use it for areas that need like a very precise calculated selection. Use it for things that are a little bit more random. Here are a couple examples. For instance, if you wanted to create a stain on the floor, let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And I'm gonna create what looks like a stain on the floor. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now. I got a couple of keyboard shortcuts that I can either add or subtract from my stain. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and that's gonna allow me to add. If I wanted to create a little area right there and something like that, I could do that and that's gonna allow me to add to this selection. If I hold alt or option, it's gonna allow me to subtract from the selection. So I simply make a loop around the area I wanna subtract, let go, and there we go. It's subtracted around. So the lasso tools are for making selections. Now. On their own, selections don't really do anything. This selection's like, okay, it's, it's not affecting the image. What a selection does is it limits the area you can actually affect with your image. For instance, I'm gonna grab a brush tool now and paint with a nice dirty stain color, something like that, looks pretty good. And you can see I'm only able to paint here inside of that stain. All right, there we go. Let's hit Command D to deselect that. That looks pretty good. Now let's give it a little bit of a blur. I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur, and to Gaussian Blur. There we go. All right, something like that, and we've got a nice stain in our carpet. Let's just lower our opacity. All right, Timmy was a little bit too friendly with a bottle of iced tea. Friendly doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word that came to mind. Now I can move this stain around and things like that. So you can see that's an incredibly like, it's a, it's a very like non-standard shape, right? And that's what the regular lasso tool is good for. Either making things like this or tracing around something like a mountain that can be like kind of scraggly and you know, can rely on the movement of your cursor. Let's do one more example here. We're gonna move in to one of these flowers. Now let's say I wanted to create a an area on these flowers where I have some like inf like a little color variation within these flowers. Here's again, the regular lasso tool is gonna be great for this. I can do things like this, where I, literally I'm just kind of like shaking my pen tablet, or you can use a mouse or whatever you have as you go. And now here with that selection active, I can go to hue, saturation, and now I can bring my saturation up and change our color. There we go, let's bring that to the left a little bit. There we go. That's gonna add to that. And we can do the same thing on another one of these if you want. Again, so an area that should be like really nice and random, that's the perfect opportunity to use the regular lasso tool because it's going to give you 
that. All right, guys, let's jump to our polygonal lasso tool. All right, so all three tools are nested together. So let's go ahead and click here. We're gonna go to our polygonal lasso tool now. Now our polygonal lasso tool is gonna allow me to create polygons. So basically, if I click in different areas, I'm creating polygons. So now I'm actually creating like very, very well-defined shapes. It's not relying on you know me doing this and like drawing perfect lines. It's creating those lines for me by connecting shapes. Now, here's a really cool feature. If I'm creating with the polygonal lasso tool and I come to an area that I actually want to start defining with the regular lasso tool, I can hold Alt or Option and then the polygonal lasso tool becomes a regular lasso tool. If I let go of Alt or Option, I'm back to the polygonal lasso tool. Very cool. And in fact, the lasso tool does the opposite. If I'm painting with the regular lasso tool and I hit Alt or Option, hold it down. I'm holding down Alt or Option right now it becomes the polygonal lasso tool. If I let this go, there we go. I'm back to the regular lasso tool. So a really cool way to kind of switch between the two, just hold down alt or option. Okay, so again, the polygonal lasso tool is for creating polygons. Now, this is gonna come in handy quite a bit. We're gonna use it as an example here on this TV. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna trace around this TV and we're gonna superimpose an image here. So we're gonna click on the top there, go all the way to the right, click on the top right there, down here, click on the bottom right, bottom left, and then we're gonna go back to the front, the original, you're gonna see a little O right next to the tool, and that could, whoop, that means it's going to finish it up. Now, if you click somewhere and you don't want it, just hit the backspace key. Like, if I'm like, oh man, I'm messing up, or your kid comes over and like drags your arm and like, daddy, I wanna play with the toy and you wind up doing like that, just hit the backspace key and it'll delete the last one you did. So you don't have to start over. All right, so we'll go back here and click there and that finishes up our selection. Okay, now with this selection, we're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna group that with itself and we're gonna put a layer mask. So anything that I put inside of this group is only gonna show up where that TV is. All right, so let's go ahead and bring an image in so we can superimpose it. All right. We're gonna to go to our parallax image, which is from our parallax tutorial. Why not use this as an opportunity to promote our store? <laughs> hey, don't, you would do the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and bring this in. And there we go. We're gonna bring our parallax image in. Now I'm gonna hit Command T to transform our parallax image. And then I'm gonna click on this bottom right corner. There we go, and drag this down. I'm gonna hold down Command and shift and option, which is gonna allow me to create perspective for my actual shape here. So I can actually match the perspective from my TV as well, which is pretty cool. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then we have our parallax tutorial. Let's size this down a little bit and hold command to grab that corner and then shift and then option. And that's going to allow me to really bring out there we go, the same perspective. Cool, now again, we used the polygonal lasso tool to create this shape. Remember, we just clicked right around there. And then we loaded that shape as a layer mask on this group. So anything that I put inside of this group is only gonna be visible there, which made it very easy to just put these two layers, both the background and the parallax, right there on the TV. So any shape that you have that's defined by a polygon, something like a building would be really nice. Anything that's got a bunch of straight lines will be perfect for the polygonal lasso tool. All right, so we've gone over the standard lasso tool, which is great for chaotic and random selections. We've gone over the polygonal lasso tool, which is great for polygons. Now we're gonna show you the magnetic lasso tool, which is great for tracing around objects. So the magnetic lasso tool is located right here under the same. We've got lasso, polygonal, and magnetic. And again, this is a perfect tool for tracing around an object. So here's the idea. Basically, click anywhere there's an edge. So in this case, there's a very nicely defined clear edge around the seat. So I'm gonna click here on the edge, and I'm gonna start pulling my cursor right around this object. Now you can see, I can actually go a little bit, I don't even have to be perfect here. I'm not, and I'm not clicking anything. I'm just moving my cursor, and it's automatically finding that edge. And again, I can move my cursor like this and it's gonna do a really good job finding that edge for me. Now, if you wanna make a point, just click with your cursor and it'll make sure that it makes a point right there wherever you click. 
All right, let's finish it up. And you can see that's how we create a selection right around our seat. That was incredibly easy to do. Now, frequency changes how many points you actually have. So let's see, right now our frequency, you can see is creating points every so often like that. If we bring our frequency up, it's going to try to create more points, which will follow something more closely. But on the downside, sometimes these selections are a little bit, um, they're a little bit more jagged because there's so many different points. Sometimes you want things to be a little more smooth. So let's bring our frequency back down. There we go, somewhere around 50. There we go, 50 or 60 is generally pretty good for most objects. Again, if you've got like a super detailed object that like you really need a lot of detail in there, that's when you wanna bring your frequency up. But you don't wanna to create too many points because that can actually make a selection look worse than it needs to. All right, your contrast is how much contrast it's actually going to look for in your image. So in this case, it's if you have a low contrast, it's going to stick with basically exactly where it thinks that need, line needs to go. If you bring your contrast up, it's going to give it a little bit more leniency with where it actually creates that line. And your width is how far your cursor can actually go from that line with it staying on the line. So for instance, if I bring my width way down here and I click here and I start bringing, it's not, it's and I go over there, it's already gonna start creating these points way out there, right? But if I bring my width a little bit further up, let's see what happens when I click here. I can go out here and you can see it's still sticking to that original object. So you can use these different options in combination with each other to make sure that you're able to trace your object perfectly. All right, there we go. That's our seat, really nicely selected. Let's go here to our adjustment layers, down to hue saturation, and then I'm gonna change the hue of just that seat, and it's just that easy. I was able to trace around that seat, and now I can change the color incredibly simply because we made that accurate selection by tracing around the seat. I kinda like that red. That's pretty cool. All right, so again, the magnetic lasso tool is gonna be perfect anytime you need to trace around an object. These tools aren't perfect and they're not without their limitation, guys. The magnetic lasso tool is really great, but if you wanted to trace around like hair or get accurate selections like that, it's gonna fall apart a little bit there. So you really wanna look for an area that's a very clearly defined edge and the magnetic lasso tool is gonna do the best job with that. All right, guys, and that's how we use our lasso tools in Photoshop. Just remember these key things. First, the standard lasso tool is great for when you're creating those chaotic and random selections. Areas like clouds or stains on the floor or variation within a flower, that's gonna be perfect for the standard lasso tool. Next, we have our polygonal lasso tool. This is gonna be great for tracing any areas that are straight, things like architecture. In this case, we used a TV. We traced around the edge and then used that selection as a layer mask and then brought our own image in to make it look like it's actually on the TV. And if you need to create a selection around an irregular shaped object, such as the seat on this toy, you're gonna to wanna to use the magnetic lasso tool. Use the options up at the top to refine your tool selections and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching Florin guys. I hope you liked today's episode on selections with the lasso tools. If you love Photoshop like I do, just click on your screen right now. It'll subscribe you to our YouTube videos and we'll send you free Photoshop episodes every single week. And if you have an idea or a qu comment, a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you, comments and all. Thanks guys, I'll flirt you later. Bye, bye, <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Comments for random and chaotic selections. Grab the comments for random and chaotic selections. Selections. Comments. Um, yes, I have a comment. It's actually pronounced comment. That's my comment. All right, good to go.